Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. And uh, I have David Hoffmeister here with me. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Yes. Um, oh, hi, Mexico. We have a room for our <laughs> friends in Mexico there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, last Friday morning, I did my last show, and um, at the time, I had no clue what was going to happen in the afternoon. But it turned out that in the afternoon, I was called to go to Las Vegas uh, <laughs> to be part of the conference that was happening at the time. And I just got really sucked in to that vibe of very joyful encounters and a lot of healing and also a lot of um, just shining the light and I just see you David they're just like such a beam of light really shining I think I don't think I actually talked to you much over throughout the whole weekend you're just surrounded by people who are just so eager you know to jump into this vibe of healing yeah. yeah, and I feel the vibe really continued after we got back because I feel like, wow, what what is time and space? It's t today is Friday. <laughs> so, and I, I remember I talked with you a little bit the other night about this, um, a life of a, a mystic. You know, there, there is this kind of um, almost uh, assumption that a life of a mystic implies something that is very still and very silent in form and yet looking at our lives it's just so much um, seemingly doing things and extending and allow our bodies to be used by the Holy Spirit whenever we're called and yes we are called you know mm -hmm. it just seems like it never never stop yeah yeah I feel there's a there's an action component, you know, that can be guided by the Spirit in the miracle. And the miracle itself is just a state of mind, that's what forgiveness is, but but very much you can, the puppet, you could say the puppet of the body can be guided and used in many, many ways. And our days are pretty full on, from morning to night, and have been for many years. And People can have stereotypes of, of the life of a mystic, just uh, sitting around and doing lots of meditation, lighting candles and incense and so forth. And there have been those times and those periods, we won't deny that. But actually, um, yeah, it's, it's very much of a, of a communication function, while there seems to be the belief in, in persons and bodies and interpersonal interactions, then all those symbols get used by the Holy Spirit. Mm. And feels like it's such a collaborative effort. The spirit never wants this body to, to just focus on itself and the mind to focus on the individual self. Even the individual awakening, you know, like mm -hmm. what, how, how to benefit me, how to benefit me, is never gonna get anywhere. And what I found out on this path is like, it's very inevitable that we just get called to collaborate and extend out and to receive and accept all kinds of um, collaborations that's been arranged by the Spirit. Like, we have James Twyman coming this afternoon to visit our community, and uh, there will be some collaboration with James, and uh, many more, right? We Yeah, like today could result in uh, him coming in mid-afternoon sometime, settling in, and mm -hmm. then maybe doing a, a concert with, with Emily and and Jason, and then, um, and then perhaps going out to see. He's he's not been to see our community here in Utah, our metaphysical center or monastery, masterpiece. Mm -hmm. A bit of that. He had an idea too of doing a cruise um, down along the coast of the Atlantic Ocean, starting, I mean, L.A. or someplace in California, and cruising down to Puerto Vallarta or something, and calling it music, movies, and miracles. Mm -hmm. So James, of course, uses his music so beautifully in a very deep meditative way, and we use uh, metaphysical movies and, yeah. and teachings in that way. So yeah, it could kind of be a, 
an interesting group to be out mm. on the high seas with a captive audience, mm. uh, just going through that. But I feel it's um, it's a big theme. The collaboration has always been really important with us, and and um, I think when you have a global ministry, which our ministry seems to touch people in many different continents, um, there's just a lot of aspects to it. So there's a lot of collaborations that are going on and and maybe we could share a little bit of behind the scenes because just uh, for us to go on a like a world tour later this year basically in October there's a lot of be behind the scene things and I know um, you're here for a little stretch of time before going off to uh, to Europe and so you're you've been getting your visa and trying to arrange your visa and my visa for China. And then there's a lot of other logistics to go in, but that just is like one example of how it, there's a lot of things to consider. Yes, yes, and um, I will be stopping in, in New York first, and just, just through the conference, there are a lot of collaboration that, it, that is unfolding, even just a short period of time I will be in New York. Um, even this morning, Jamani sent me an email to to arrange some time to talk a little bit more. So mm -hmm. there might be even future collaboration in China too, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. he really wants to uh, visit China as well. Then you know we have emails about the possible gathering in Europe. And we're looking for a center there as well. So it's just everything that's just unfolding, you know, every single day. And when we really don't have the plan, you know, it's really miraculous because something comes in, you know, always at the right time without us uh, interfer interfering with the plan. So even we um, going to China, we have a friend, Jeffrey, who really wants to come with us and film David on a world tour um, and eventually probably make a documentary about it. And we have other friends who really put their hands up to want to come and support the trip to China and to Japan. So everything is unfolding, you know, bit by bit yeah. as we go on. Yeah, day by day, moment by moment, and we just take in a lot of things and look at what's unfolding and have to kind of feel things out. But it, it does focus you back to staying very in the moment because there are certain things that need consideration. Um, we were talking about doing a like a collaboration with Teal Swan and her manager Blake coming up perhaps. We are talking about doing a mystery school, you know, probably multiple times during the years. And so that's the website's just uh, coming along, I think it's very close to mm. coming out. And then, uh, yeah, there's this collaboration coming up in the Rocky Mountains uh, in June with a group of teachers up there at Estes Park. So it's, yeah, it's quite full on. And besides that, we have our usual backdrop of all kinds of logistic, administrative things, board meetings, you know, people don't realize uh, when, you know, you go along and you do nonprofits, then there's all those things as well. And then the people in the room know that cleaning, maintenance, tech support, um, website work, uh, uh, webmastering, it's just a huge, huge array of things. But the whole point is to be done through by the Spirit so that you just are tuned in and it's a sense of that involuntary flow, which is where the joy is. There's no stress in staying off the timeline and staying in the moment and being a channel and a vehicle for the Holy Spirit. And it's only when you start to take things personally and think that you personally have to do something, personally have to figure something out, personally have to get something done, that's the self-concept and the ego coming in and, and there's a lot of stress. Mm. And I think you could say that the Spirit is calling our mind away from the ego. So when Jesus says, I'm calling you out of the world, he really is meaning, I'm calling your mind back to its pristine condition of stillness in which you were created perfect and still. And the way to do that is to let the judgment of the Holy Spirit come through you, uh, rather than by you, meaning uh, 
instead of the ego trying to navigate its way back to heaven, which it has no clue about, then we have to let the Spirit give us what to say, what to do every day. So it's like, in, in one sense, you, you become not, not just a scribe for Christ, but you become a channel for Christ, and then you start to merge with the Christ, so you experience yourself as the Christ, and then that's the whole point of everything, know thyself know who you truly are. So that's kind of the backdrop for how things are going, but mm. it, it involves a lot of uh, a lot of specifics. Mm. Yeah, that's something that the ego mind would have never guessed, that, you know, or have chose, uh, chosen for itself to go toward the awakening. It has a very rosy or romantic idea of the end, what, mm -hmm. what awakening means to itself, and even the means, how to achieve it. But yet, you know, the, the way that we have to go about it is allow ourselves to just to, to surrender moment to moment and really accept everything that is given without judgment, without pushing things away and without trying to make anything happen and just really allow this body to be used as a conduit. And then the mind started to expand in that way because it literally could not really understand the egoic construct of what is the best, you know, what is the worst, how to compare with people, how to compare scenarios, what is the goal that eventually we want to achieve. It's just all got wept out in the mind when we allow ourselves just to jump in to what is given in the moment. Yeah, it's easy to, the ego likes to slip into uh, its false sense of comfort, so it likes it likes routines and rituals, and there's definitely routines and rituals initially can be used by the Holy Spirit. Even the workbook lessons of A Course in Miracles are a, a routine. It's a it's a it's like a workout routine for your mind instead of for your body. It's a workout routine for your mind. And then he clearly states though that that this isn't about making rituals of anything, and as you go deeper with the lessons, and even deeper with the workbook, it goes more into things like our use for words is almost over now, and we but start with the lesson of the day to kind of set our mind in the direction. So, you're taking a pathway that's very much toward ascension, very much towards op opening and opening your mind, your heart, coming to that stillness. So, I think, uh, in terms of rituals, it's just easy for the ego to just kind of make things bland, try to normalize things, try to keep guilt and anxiety and fear and worry at bay by falling into a routine. And most people know how that feels. It's very lethargic, you, you don't have a sense of vitality or energy, and you just kind of get into the routine of things. It's very tempting. Uh, I would say when you really give yourself over fully to the Holy Spirit, uh, as the Bible says, uh, the teaching is, for those who much is given, much will be asked or much will be required. None of us know how much that really is. That when you actually give yourself over to Christ and you say, here, you got my mind full time now, that, that you become like a, a full time worker for atonement and awakening, your days can be often filled with things, although even though there's a wonderful full feeling and a flow, it's it's not like you're fatigued at the end of the day, or it's not like uh, you can't wait to get to sleep and and so forth, because you it's really, you get excited about it, you get passionate about it, and you really kind of jump out of bed in the morning and you go at it and you you rest a very serene sleep at night when your mind is, is truly being used and, and occupied by the Spirit. I have been hearing that sentence a lot in the last couple of days. The more uh, you give, the more that is given, the more will be asked. Yeah. It's like, oh man, you know, how much is asked is, the Spirit is asking all of us, all of us, not even a little bit that is left to be with the ego. is. The total, the totality of our minds, the totality of our time. You know, what is a, what is the time for if our mind is using the time to distract, you know, from thinking with the Christ and about the Christ, 
if our mind is used in that way to get distractions, uh, indulge in the attack thoughts, join with people in fo- false empathy, those are not the way the spirit wants us to use our mind. So there are like certain times he just calls us, seemingly, you know, calls the body, but it's really the mind. Give me all your mind, all your energy, all your thoughts, you know, all of it. Mm-hmm. And think with me throughout the day from from morning to evening. Yeah. Yeah, and there's always a spark and a vitality. I know over the years we've seen different things. We've had music festival, enlightenment festival, We've done quite a few retreats where people would come and uh, be with us for a week or two weeks or even four weeks or six weeks. But it seems like in the recent years the retreats have started to fade a little bit. And then things like uh, the travels have, s- have still been there. Uh, there's still travels and conferences and occasionally collaborations in that way. The online retreat uh, that we did with the Portuguese translation seemed to be have a lot of synergy with it and there was a lot of joy and synergy with it. So that's kind of beckoning this thing that there could be more online retreats because they're very easy to attend, they're cost effective, uh, they, they're very impactful but they don't take as much time and effort to put together a lot of logistics like sleeping arrangements and food and and bedding and all kinds of things, transportation, uh, it's using the internet a little bit more, so there's like a synergy that's involved with these online retreats, because you still have that same transparency, you have that same sense of, of opportunity to pour your heart out, ask questions, you know, do expressions, um, receive very profound answers, and also we used a movie, The Island, during that and uh, the Spirit came ripping through me at different points, but it sounded a little bit like Jesus of old. Uh, and I enjoy that. I enjoy the depth of uh, going really deep into mystical uh, states of mind with everybody. It's like a group of us kind of mis- seemingly symbolically going in together. And so that's also exciting and, and is a possibility. In terms of community, I, I do feel you know, it's, it's truly a state of mind, so what we're doing now, even broadcasting this show, is really like a digital sharing that's going on, and it's like digital community. And in one sense, uh, you still have to handle uh, some of the logistics of, of caring and attending for a body on planet Earth, but really not that much. And if you notice the lives of the traditional mystics and saints, they didn't put much care and attention to the body at all. And yet, uh, their focus was more the stillness, and ours is a still mind and, and communicating the, the steps and the, the way, which the pathway to come into this state of mind. So there's a vibrancy uh, with some things in our ministry, and a few other things are starting to trail off a little bit. Yeah, David's body is being so used by the Spirit. He did a dental surgery, and I picked him up, and his whole face was covered by S pad and, and uh, everything. It looked like a mummy. They, like they a mummy, the whole face was covered. And as soon as he got out of the car, he said to talk. So I don't think you ever stopped talking from that point either. Like the face is just looking normal, and the mouth was still used very much. So it doesn't matter the yeah. situation. Yeah, I got back to my office, and my whole head was wrapped like a mummy with an ice pack and everything, but then uh, I think it was uh, Jenny wanted a Skype call from over in Sweden, so I, I put the little headset on, and I could, I could still hear her through the, the gauze and everything, but if, after a little while I just said, I gotta take all this stuff off, I, I gotta continue on. So yeah, the, the beat goes on, and a friend of mine was asking me, you know, how did that go? And I said, well, it's, you know, it's just like anything else. I. I get guided if something, I have some uh, dentists and surgeons that are really, uh, really good, top-notch in, in the world, and so they just, they I feel like I'm in the hands of the angels whenever anything has to be done, even with the body, because I continue right on, rolling on, doing what I'm doing, and it usually happens pretty quickly mm. and swiftly. Mm. They even said that the, the operation was boring, or I think the word, dull. The dull. They said it was very dull. Uh, so it was almost matter of fact. So uh, that's 
that's an interesting reflection from yeah. your your doctors and dentists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just just really good because watching us, I guess everybody, myself and all the people here, you know, we not only just um, read the course or practice, but we have someone that we really watch. You know how the spirit actually use a symbol for his purpose. You know, and awakening is achieved when we are serving the Christ, not serving the self, even the awakening of the self. So just watching that, just, you know, every day, you know, even in that, there are a lot of forgiveness of, oh my God, the ego would be thinking, you never do this or you never do that. You do look after the body or you completely don't. It's always, it always comes with extremes. And just by watching and practicing every day, um, we allow our mind to be in a very, very soft place, you know, without judgment, just like whatever comes in, who am I to judge? And our our function is just to allow ourselves to be used, allow this body like a cup to be used, to be filled up and to be poured out, you mm -hmm. know, consistently. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I know. It reminds me of the metaphor. I feel like we're we're all used so so deeply and so thoroughly by the Holy Spirit. It reminds me of that time when they were they were looking for uh, the largest organism on Earth, and what it came was the largest organism on Earth was this group a grove of trees where all the root systems were connected, and all these grove of trees was was the largest organism on Earth. And uh, we wouldn't even think of that when we think of an organism as a group of trees. But, but when we have a group of people seemingly are just symbols being used by the spirit, you know, it's like you know our community and our global community and our greater community, not just living miracles, but course in miracles, uh, uh, basically all kinds of Advaita Vedanta, all kinds of awakening paths. If you think of all the ones that seem to be on a conscious awakening path is like a giant organism that every day more roots go out and, and there's more seeming expansion with it. It's just really the use of all the symbols yeah. by the Spirit. Yeah. And also, you know, I, I do feel in a way that uh, for myself to, to be practically ap uh, applying the teachings, the first step is to be totally transparent and that's why, you know, the way that w everything we do, we work, we live, we are transparent here, we're transparent with with you, and y you even said to me the other night, we need to be more transparent. I thought, how do we be more <laughs> transparent? And we're like, <laughs> everything we know, you know, and mm -hmm. it was like, there's nothing that is not, not open, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the way opens, like, for example, I think Francis and I just got a an email this morning from our friend Chris over in the Netherlands and he found this lovely little retreat place and it seems like everything clicked in um, just one thing after the next and it's it's actually in July, What's, what were the dates? July 11th to 15th. July 11th to 15th and we've talked about maybe doing something here with Teal on the 17th and 18th and I was feeling more and more it, it may be later on, it may be August and September, but but we're open to all things and we've kind of been open to like a center happening. We've had a center over in Europe before, but something coming. So for me it's it's a very, very spontaneous year and we see these wonderful invitations come in. I think even you and Jenny were considering the possibility of something and then we were looking maybe at August or September and then he found something in uh, July. July, quite early, but uh, so that's where we're very transparent about these things because as things keep unfolding, you know, we just really have to feel and be strongly guided to go wherever we go and whatever we do, because that's what it's all about. It's it's not about trying to fit your life into a schedule in time and space. It's more like bringing all the concepts of time and space to the Holy Spirit in your mind and saying. Show me every day. Paint, paint me a picture. Uh, paint me a picture of how this day should look. Paint, every day, um, I think that was a Barbara Varley song. I'm willing for my life to be a picture painted by Holy Spirit. Painted mm -hmm. by Holy Spirit. It's a song that she channeled 
uh, from the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it goes. So I think the transparency is important because we just keep going along and sharing ideas and inspirations and then the timing of those when they actually seem to come about is very much just orchestrated by the Spirit. Mm. Mm. It's very joyful life that way. Mm. Yeah, like even thinking about the way that I went to the conference, I feel like uh, Jason and I talked about it way before, because I know that Jason and Emily will get married in, in Vegas, and I felt for me to be there, but nothing was obvious to, for me to be part of the conference. I was not needed. I'm more needed here, so I just felt like I, I need a much, much more obvious sign for me to go. And I waited and I waited and waited. And about a week before the conference, I just said, I give up because there was no sign. And Thursday, I drove David to the airport, and the conference started. I did my show on Friday morning. It was just everything went on as if I'm not going there. Then suddenly, Friday afternoon, there was an emergency call. Our books didn't make it, and uh, we missed the cutoff to, to ship our books overnight. Then a friend suggested the best way to, to deliver the books is to drive over now, <laughs> literally. <laughs> and I thought, my God, I don't know how many times Jason suggested me driving over, and I said, I'm waiting for a sign. So, <laughs> so the, when the sign came, it, I had literally 20 minutes to leave, so I packed everything, I jumped in the car with such joy, and like, thank you Spirit for the big sign, there I go. So I went there with Sarah and arrived at 2 o'clock in the morning, and uh, I actually attended pretty much most of the conference and supported where I need to support, and I actually met a lot of dear friends there, and uh, even uh, some collaborators for for New York and for Japan, so it was just so it was so purposeful, and yeah, I just if I look at it, you know, just everything happened exactly as it should. I was so focused here, even doing my show in the morning it was just no thought, and then the spirit came in with the perfect sign at the right time, and with the right person, Sarah. So there we went, and that was how the life unfold it was just you don't know before before that but choose peace you know choose peace and the form will will be exactly how it should be yeah yeah it's great too because Francis is feeling um, the call to travel and teach so going over to uh, Europe is going to be part of that even mm -hmm. though it starts off perhaps with a, a sign of retreat mm -hmm. in England but that is going to be in there and and that's another way that, that all of you that tune in can help too, because that's the way it's gone for me all these years is it's I've just been hosted by dear friends. Dear friends say, oh, come and stay at my house. We've got a, an extra bedroom or a guest room or a couch. Um, we'd be glad to put the word out, call some friends, use an email list and whatever. And it has to be your calling. It was my calling to travel all those years and and speak and go in living rooms and basements and backyards and and you know all kinds of different uh, venues, churches, Course of Miracles groups, and so on and so forth. And now with Francis really feeling the call too to go out, we'll be doing some travels together there coming in October. That's more of a round the world trip to China, Japan, and. Australia, but but those are the ways in which you can can help out, and that's where our transparency helps. Just hearing Francis say, "Yeah, I'm I'm willing to travel. I want to travel. I want to teach." There's a a passion with it. There's an excitement. Uh, other times, people feel called call to be part of the communities, and there's a, a community can be kind of like an incubator where you work through some darkness and let a lot of unconscious stuff come up, and you go through healings. But ultimately, the whole point of clearing the darkness is so that you can be a, an instrument, so the fruits of the Spirit can pour through you. And then there's nothing more fun than getting invitations and having support. Uh, people saying, come here, if you'd like to join and support. It's a big collaborative effort. It's always been a big collaborative effort. And we don't, 
we don't really kind of do things in the typical ways of the world where somebody writes a, a book and then the book becomes popular and then they go on popular talk shows or radio shows and then the the commercial success of the book drives the workshops, drives the travels, it drives the appearances on other TV shows. That's pretty much how the world works and everything we do. I remember even with The Course in Miracles at the beginning years, they said that, that the a Course in Miracles was not really meant to be advertised. It would, it would make its own way around the world through word of mouth. So that's giving you a, a very different idea than the standard commercial success. The Course in Miracles, you know, has has sold a lot of copies and there's a lot of digital copies now on the internet, but it's something that's a it's a very deep intimate practice and I would say even the the extending of it is more just to be guided by the Holy Spirit and it's not meant to be some kind of a a big uh, thing in form, it's more just simple, everyday, ordinary miracles pouring from your mind, from the Holy Spirit, through you, through your mind. And and then we can collaborate, we can communicate in a very full way and that just even makes it more of a of a joyful shared experience. So it works works quite well, but it's good to, to know uh, to know everything that's happening, so you're just aware of it all. Mm. Yeah, what I noticed in my experience is that, you know, you said in the conference that to those who are devoted, uh, the, those who are devoted deserve devotion. Or entitled, yeah. Entitled to devotion. And what I noticed is that, um, you know, when I give my full attention to support or to serve the Christ, <coughs> to do whatever the Christ uh, want me to do, then the support comes this way, and that's what it's just how it is. And there's never a demand, or there is dev never a request for any support. Um, we just know that is how things are working. You know, we just have one direction to go, and then all the support, the spirit is is orchestrating all the support to to support us to go that way. Even with, with this conference, I, s I see Dan there. Hi, Dan. Thank you for your support <laughs> in the conference. You just, just uh, like jumped in and worked with Laverne at the uh, bookstore. Really didn't didn't do much else. You didn't go to lunch or dinners and just be there in support. And we have even people coming all the way from, from Japan and um, a friend just when she landed, she went straight to the bookstore. Can I volunteer throughout this weekend? And that just is is the call of the spirit. You know, let's just all go toward one direction. It's not supporting a body or a person because anyone is special, but we devote our mind to support. You know, the the calling for the Christ. So that is yeah. really amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite an amazing passage that Francis was just talking about in the text where Jesus is saying, if if you are devoted, you are entitled to devotion. And that's more of a reflection of all that I give is given to myself, and giving and receiving is the same, that if you have a heart of devotion, a heart of devotion and service to God, then then that will be reflected. You'll just draw forth lots of symbols of, of the devotion. and. And that's quite a contrast with the ego, which is very body-centered and self-centered. You might say that uh, that in working with students over the years, I think one of the biggest blocks that students had in working with me and opening their minds and hearts up was this sense of entitlement, where it was a personal entitlement. I'm entitled to this, I'm entitled to that. Uh, I think it was a Muji talk a while back where he said, you have no rights, and basically he was talking about you have no personal rights. We think of the United States Constitution and, you know, you know, we hold these inalienable rights to be self-evident. That, that human beings, the whole construct of being a human seems to be that you are entitled to certain personal rights. And when we talk about entitled to devotion, we're not talking about personal rights at all. We're not talking about personal entitlements. 
uh, that's one of the biggest blocks to spiritual awakening is thinking that that you personally know anything, deserve anything, are entitled to anything. Uh, those are all huge pride blocks and then when you realize what does Jesus say about entitlement? He says, here's a workbook lesson, I am entitled to miracles. That's all that you're entitled to is miracles. That's all that you, you can claim in your entitlement uh, as, as a child of God, is it being a miracle worker and you're entitled to miracles. But those are, those are to give them away. He says you have a storehouse in your mind that you can give, give away. So it's very, very different from this idea of thinking that I'm a human being and I'm entitled to certain rights and uh, you know uh, even in the United States Constitution I guess it's uh, that that you're entitled as an American citizen to the pursuit of life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, then we learn from the Course that there is no biological life, that all, all life as we've thought of it on planet Earth is is a projection. So we're not entitled to any of that even. You're not even entitled to, entitled to a physical life. Liberty, which is freedom, is only of the mind. And Jesus says in the Course, what do you want? Freedom of the body or freedom of the mind? For both you cannot have. So again, he's saying you'll never achieve liberty through uh, through the government through a constitution, through uh, any kind of laws. You'll never achieve liberty through uh, any types of uh, political uh, mechanisms or whatever. You know, to me that's, it's so fun to just listen to all the talk that goes on. And uh, when I look at this thing of liberty, when I grew up, there was a big deal between the free countries and the countries that weren't free. The free countries were the ones that had whatever democracy and capitalism, <laughs> and the, the imprisoned countries were the ones that had, had dictators or were communists, socialists, and, and they had some form of that. What a joke to think when you start to realize that there's no freedom in form, and that there isn't even certain forms of government that are more free than others. Uh, that's why I, I will listen to a speech over here from a political candidate or whatever, and they just, uh, I was just reading this morning that uh, Vladimir Putin in Russia had his, he has like this show where he goes on and he, he answers uh, questions for everyday people. It's like a like an interactive thing, and he received over a million questions. So I was having just a good laugh this morning, uh, watching how Vladimir Putin answered all these questions that were coming in. And I mean, they got a whole range of things like, "Should I eat my porridge?" Little children, should I eat my porridge? And he said, "Yes, I, I always eat my porridge. You should eat yours too." And and it was just so humorous as he, he was answering all these questions, but but I keep coming back to this, it's so profound to realize that that we're, we're not really entitled to biological life, we're not entitled to liberty of the body, and the ego doesn't mind if you keep pursuing happiness, as long as you keep your pursuit of happiness focused on externals. If I get more money, if I get more pleasure, if I accumulate more things, if I have more status, you know, the ego likes the pursuit of happiness. The ego loves that. It's one of its favorite games. It's a death game, but still it, it's disguised as the pursuit of happiness in this world. And so the very things that are guaranteed by the United States Constitution, you see, are really not guaranteed at all. And I would say the same with the British Parliament or any any government, any kind of constitution that any country has, those things are really not going to get you to a state of complete bliss and contentment. Those things have to be examined very closely and seen to be false, like everything else in the projected world. So they said when I was in China that, that I would have no problem with the government because my teachings weren't political. 
And it's true. I, I am teaching that it's a, it's a state of mind, and that you just have to let go and exchange this these ego beliefs and ego thoughts for the thought system of the Holy Spirit and the the Spirit's perception of the world, and and that's an exchange you can make. But it's very different from thinking you can make a a real change in a in a make believe world. Mm. Well. Maybe we can just just talking about mind and it's all the mind. I uh, actually Jeremy from South Africa. Hi, Jeremy. Has a question here. So I thought, um, yeah, he was asking that um, I have a dear friend who keeps on telling me to stop thinking to get out of my mind and experience. The course tells me that all there is is my mind, and spends a lot of pages. Keeping me thinking about my thinking, I sense the answer is in the area of who is doing the thinking, my ego or spirit. But if is there the possibility of direct, thoughtless experience? Much love and thanks. Yeah, yeah, Jeremy. I think a lot of it is just semantics because we have a lot of really wonderful spiritual teachers around the world, but they're all using different semantics. So you have, you know, people like Eckhart and. Adi Ashanti, Muji, different ones that that equate the mind with the ego, and therefore, uh, get out of your mind is basically saying get out of your ego. That's that's from those perspectives using the semantics that way. From a Course in Miracles perspective, Jesus is saying you, God, there's a mind of God, there's a mind of Christ. You are a divine mind. Uh, mind is all that there is. You know, he says, mind reaches to itself, it does not go out, within itself is everything, you within it, and it within you. So, it's a, Jesus is just using a very different semantics to talk about the same thing that, that Eckhart and Adi Shanti and Muji are talking about, and many others. So, when people say to you, get out of your mind and, and get into experience, there may be a, a little hint or a reflection of something to pay attention to, because one of the biggest traps that that the ego has is it, it will take a, an amazing, spectacular teaching like A Course in Miracles, and the ego is so frightened of the love that of Christ that it will try to turn the Course into just an intellectual endeavor. Um, it will take something that's designed as a ladder to take you all the way back to enlightenment and to the light of God, and it will try to turn it into a conceptual program. And then that's another sneaky trick, because then people can just roll around in the concepts for many, many years, almost like rolling in the hay, just rolling in the concepts. And so when somebody says to you, you know, get out of your mind and get into the experience, you could say that there's a call behind that to come come into an actual experience where you have to trust and let go of of the things that have served in the past of of the ego's comfort zone and and kind of crack open into an experience uh, I would say too from the course perspective that that just to believe that you're a human being on planet earth is part of the ego's attempt to to keep you mindless, you know, to have you forget the power of the mind, the power of thoughts, the power of beliefs. It, it, the, really, the mind is extremely powerful, and if you have false beliefs and false thoughts in that powerful mind, it, it projects a whole cosmos out. So, in, in one sense, um, most of us grow up and our parents are not really focusing a lot of attention on the mind. You know, we don't come come home from school, how's your mind? You know, how's your mind today? Uh, or when we're going through a temper tantrum, now watch your thoughts, watch those attack thoughts, you know, because you're hurting yourself when you do that. It's all, it's, everything's based on, you know, eat your, finish your uh, green greens and finish your food or you don't get dessert and, and all these behavioral consequences and we're, we're treated very much like a body mm. and we're treated, we have to grow up and work hard and survive and do all these things, but 
we're not really the soul and the the mind and and the training that's required in the mind is, doesn't get a lot of of attention at all. So now, once we we make it into our our spiritual journey in a conscious way, we start to realize that we do have to be very attentive of what's going on in our minds. And the mind is not the brain. That's another thing that quantum a lot of scientists, even quantum physicists, because it's just a bad habit, they still associate the brain with the mind. And this gray matter inside the skull is is not the mind at all. In fact, the little neurotransmitters that are moving around in the brain, um, Jesus equates those, to equate those little neurotransmitters with thoughts in the mind is like taking a match and lighting a match and holding it up to the sun. That's what, what those neurotransmitters are like a match compared to the sun. They're just, they're projections of the ego belief system, and the, and the brain doesn't think, it's just, it's just a projection. The body is just like a puppet that follows instructions of the mind, and so any teacher, any teacher of any time that tries to depreciate the power of the mind is not actually helpful for awakening. Because the mind is the, is the source and, and the causation of all the seeming power uh, that God gave to Christ, and therefore you can't depreciate the power of the mind and expect to wake up. And I would say, I just, I always am aware of the semantics, so when I have to kind of translate for other teachers back into Course in Miracles uh, semantics so people can understand and not get too confused. Mm. <laughs> Thumbs up. Thank you, Jeremy. I think you had a question from yeah. Laverne, too. Maybe I think since uh, Laverne is probably there, I want to call Laverne mm -hmm. to talk to her. <laughs> call Laverne up to the. Laverne. From the, the Mexico crowd. <laughs> yep, they're getting ready. <laughs> there she comes. <laughs> Hi, Laverne. <laughs> Hi, David. Hi there. Hi. Yeah, I know you you sent me the question, but I just want to see whether you still feel that way or you still want maybe you can you can explain it better. You know, in yeah, words. I just um, had such a miraculous <clears throat> experience at the at the Course in Miracles conference, and I didn't hardly go to any of the sessions. <laughs> you know, but the collaboration in the bookstore and you know, meeting friends and just following the spirit's guidance, you know, the whole weekend, it was just, it was just a, a great experience of just being in that flow, even though there was so much going on, so much activity, you know, it was just like hardly a, a moment, you know, was, was idle, so to speak. And, and then on um, <clears throat> Monday when I was, was heading back, it just, and I was going to the airport, it just seemed like everything was such a struggle. And uh, the smallest things like waiting in line at the uh, registration desk at the hotel for an hour because there was a problem with my bill on the room and um, trying to get a stamp for an envelope I needed to mail before I left the country. and. I mean, just these seemingly small things were just taking so much effort, and I just was like, then the thoughts coming in, like, maybe it's not guided for me to leave, you know, or why is it so hard when it was just so effortless, you know, those days that I was there at the conference. So it was, yeah, it was just seeing and feeling a difference in, in that energy and then wondering, you know, if it was given, you know, for me to return to Mexico and so that was where the the email um, was that I sent to you Francis just when I was sitting when I finally got to my seat in the airplane I'm like oh my god I was, took everything I had just to get on the plane so that's 
the context of my question that I kind of still feel a bit of energy around that if whether or not you know is when it's such a struggle is it given you know is that given when it's so hard yeah it's beautiful I, th I think your question is a lot of beautiful nuances in it because uh, there's a workbook lesson in A Course of Miracles that says, I will step back and let him lead the way. And I would say to the extent that we completely, completely surrender over to the Spirit, then, you know, uh, we get this, an amazing experience. Uh, Jesus talks about when you have learned to decide with God, all decisions become as easy and as right as breathing and it will be as if you are carried down a quiet path in summer. Uh, it's so soft. I mean, Jesus is so poetic. He's like, Jesus, Rumi, a lot of the great poets have described this, this flow. It's so soft, it's so gentle, it's so easy, it's so effortless. Even that passage that Lisa Natoli was quoting at the conference that I quote often about, um, the promise, you know, once you have accepted his plan as the one function, it, and it goes on to say, without your effort, he will go before you, making straight your path and leaving in your way no stones to trip on, no obstacles to bar your way. So, in one sense, if, when you give your life over to Spirit, as you have done, uh, it's, it's taken the form of, of, you've had some amazing travels, and you enjoy traveling. Uh, you've had, I remember with uh, Helena, with Lisa, you know, and you're saying, get out on the road with Francis, maybe you'll end up on that world tour with, with Jeffrey and Francis and I, or whatever. You you enjoy that, and, and you also have enjoyed the symbol of spiritual community, where it's the purposeful, focused use of time, where there's not a lot of wasted words, where we don't really have registration desk and reception, so that when you come back, you you can just, somebody opens the gate and lets you in and, and you know, and you can kind of ease back into that, that flow of very de single, devoted purpose. And so, in one sense, for, for you, you know, you've appreciated that single flow of purpose, and then when you go out on these road trips, to, like to Las Vegas, or out with, uh, with Helena and Al, or wherever you go like that, it's it's the Spirit saying, now let's transfer it. I want you to get so in tune, so aligned, that you lose track of the passage of time. Uh, that you could be there, uh, maybe at a registration desk, where they've lost something, or something wrong with the bill, and you could be laughing and smiling and connecting, and, and not conscious of the movement of time. Or, or with transportation, a lot of times with travel, there's, you have to hit the mark so many times. Hit the mark to for your taxi or shuttle ride. Hit the mark for your airplane taking off, and, and so on and so forth. So, when you're on the road, so to speak, it's almost like, uh, like, like you're Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible, or you're like Jason Bourne, you know, in the in the Bourne trilogy, or you're like James Bond, who's got to hit all these marks just right, and, and because there's the world is so complex, there's so many options in the world, and yet we we love it when our when we're seeing a reflection of somebody who's just hitting the mark, and they do it with smile on their face. You know, Bond is going there, bullets are flying, and cars are smashing, and all these things are happening, and he still gets a smile on his face. Like he actually seems to be enjoying himself, uh, while all this danger and and adventures going on, Bond is still happy. Uh, that's the that's what the goal is for miracle workers is is to keep transferring the training and let the trust level climb higher and higher, so so that you get really content. You this feeling you're always at the right place at the right time. That. Uh, you know, it's one of the most amazing transfers of training. And so, you going off to Las Vegas was was another step in that direction. 
for me in the parable of David, I kind of traveled around the United States and North America and that had its own opportunities for forgiveness, plenty of them. But then when I was sent to South America, oh my gosh, going into some of those countries, I didn't speak the language. It was like being thrown into the Amazon River um, during the rain season or something. And I just had to let go uh, of thinking I knew what was happening, trying to control anything, um, expecting anything to be a certain way. I had to really do that. So that's the context for this, and and just by your willingness to follow the Spirit and go on these trips, and and be used as you are in a very focused way, that's all part of the the grist for the mill, so to speak. That's the purification, the the grinding down of the of the chunky particles, the grains down into the powder. You're just getting into that soft, like if you reach your hand down into flour or powder, you know, its grain is so soft and it's, it's so silky smooth when you put your hand in the powder. But if you put your hand into the grain, you'll f you feel the granules, you know, there's more resistance um, than there is with the powder and it's, it's just all a progression that's mm -hmm. happening. Yeah, it is a lot of mind training in travels, you know, because in, in the community we have, you know, so many friends around us and, and a single move affects everything, so we kind of always join and pray together, and it makes things very obvious. But when we go on the road, it it's like okay, this this reader to, to tune in with the spirit needs to be really developed, and as soon as we you know hear move, we need to move pretty swiftly with that. But uh, on top of that, also what is really held in the mind steadily is what is this for, you know, really doing this is so that we see through the forgiving eyes to everything. We meet with people with this um, desire to give in every moment. And when that purpose is held in the mind, then the question of, you know, why this and why that doesn't really come up too much because then the, the focus is really like, how do I give in this moment and how do I see it with your eyes? And how do I, you know, tune in to, to your voice? So that becomes really fun, actually, to be on the road, to, to practice that. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I, I remember when I was on the road with David, at the beginning, it was kind of like moving so fast. It was unbelievable. It was not a normal way to travel in this world at all, because I was quite a traveler myself before. And as soon as I travel with David, it was unbelievable, the speed. As soon as we hear something, we go, we don't question it or rationalize it. And also every opportunity, even on the road, in the airport, in the lines, at the restaurant, um, were completely used for extending holy encounters and just shining the lights. So it's actually, that is the way that lifts lifts us up, you know, it's not so much the question of is this supposed to be or is not supposed to be, that question kind of bog us down. Yeah. Thank you, Laverne. Thank you, Laverne. <laughs> well, hmm. Wow, we got two minutes left. Yes. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I feel so joined with all of you, and we're we're in this so deeply together that uh, yeah, every day it's it's a joy to wake up and just see what's on the plate and what's given, and and uh, to just dive into it with joy and and enthusiasm and and happiness, and and we teach what we would learn, you know, what what you give is what you receive, and so that's the. That's been the blessing for me, and uh, yeah, Francis just asked was it yesterday. Just said, "Oh, I'm doing my show, and like to would you like to come on?" And I said, "Oh, that would be great." And I've got another radio interview later today, and then with James Twyman coming, and so it's just fun. We we have always a lot of things. Uh, Nikita's been helping me out a lot too because I get so many messages and requests and things and. So uh, we've been joining, and she's joining in mind 
to uh, to answer a lot of these things, and uh, so it's nice. I have extra s set of fingers. I have I have instead of ten fingers now, I have twenty fingers, <laughs> and uh, that that's a nice comforting thing. But we're linking up in mind, and she's not signing the things, Nikita. She's or she is signing him, Nikita, <laughs> no, but she's not David. signing him as David. So. Uh, she's not impersonating me, because I'm not a person anyway, and it's hard to impersonate a spirit. But, but you know, we're, it's a collaboration, and I think that's the thing we're all looking to do, is mm -hmm. be joined in spirit, so that the spirit is light, joyful, playful, fun-loving, easy, and then it, it comes across, that, that the people around us start to reflect back that, wow, you're happy, you're having a joyful time, and it's like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if, if anything, you know, we just really want to deliver that because it's so fun to give our lives over to the Spirit. It's so easy and it's fun, it's, it's amazing, it's not a, in any way sacrificial. It's just in this ego mind that is so distorted and it's not really to be believed in. And if anything, yeah, we are just here to, to show and to be able to, to demonstrate that, because it's our joy to do that. Mm. So thank you so much. Mm. I will see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>